Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about what airline pilots do before they get to the cockpit. What kind of paperwork do we do? How early are we in the crew room? Who does what? And so on. So stay tuned. Right guys, I'm actually on my way into work now, so I'm going to be showing you what kind of paperwork we're doing. So stay tuned guys, I think you're going to like this one. Right, so now I'm entering into our crew room here and fortunately I have my first officer, Luca here. Hi Luca! So what we'll be showing you in this video guys is basically an overview over uh, the paperwork that we're doing prior to a flight. So me and Luca, we have been flying already today. Uh, we are going to prepare a flight now from Shalowa to Edinburgh. And I'm not gonna go into much details about the paperwork because that will take m way too long time. I'm just gonna show you what we do and, uh, and then you can ask me questions. And if there's something that you want really more information about, then you can tell me and we can do a separate video on that particular paperwork. Right, Luca, so let's get started, shall we? Hi. In my airline, we have to be in the airport 45 minutes, in the crew room actually, 45 minutes prior to departure. Okay. We should really be out in the, um, in the aircraft 30 minutes prior to departure. And as you can see, if you do your math, that's only about 15 minutes to do the paperwork. Which means that what I tend to do to give myself a little bit extra slack is that I tend to turn up a little bit earlier than that. Now the legal requirement is, 50, is uh, 45 minutes before, but I tend to give it about an hour. Because I want to take my time to go through the paperwork thoroughly and to discuss it with my first officer, especially if there's something we find in the paperwork that requires a little bit more attention. Okay, so what we tend to do is, now I'm flying with a really good first officer, so Luca has been in even earlier than me and has been printing all of the paperwork before. Now, um, different airlines will have different procedures for this, so we're using a specific network uh, where we get all our briefing data and our flight plans from, so we can just log in there, download it, print it out and we have it in our iPads as well but we at the moment for legal reasons you need to have it printed as well so that's why we have paper copies okay so now since Luke has prepared everything very nicely I can just show you what we tend to be looking at so when I come in I want to give myself a proper view over the day's operation okay I want to start with getting an, an a sense of what the weather is like and if there's something that's going to cause us problem during the day so the first thing I tend to do is I tend to have a look at the significant weather charge and the wind charge so Lucas printed out the briefing pack here and that includes the significant weather charts now as you can see this is a picture of Europe we're going to be flying from Shalowa to Edinburgh, which is in this area here. And Lucas already highlighted the area that we're going to be flying in. And as you can see, there's almost nothing here. The only thing that I kind of making me a little bit worried is this jet stream of about 90 knots over the British Isles. Because I know that jet streams have a tendency to create clear air turbulence. So there might be in association with this jet stream a bit of turbulence, which is something that I'm going to have to speak to my cabin crew about later on. But Otherwise, generally the picture looks quite good. There is no big things here. I can see that up to the north, about in Ireland and stuff, there's a little bit of cloud areas here that includes a bit of turbulence and a little bit of icing, but it's nothing that's going to affect our uh, particular flights. Maybe just a little bit in the end here. Together with that, we also have wind charts. So these charts are showing us how the wind strength is at different altitudes. That's why we have so many of them. And that's to give us a picture of how the flight is going to progress as we climb and descend into our destination. So now, as I have a good, a good picture of that now, I'm going to go in to look at the weather in more detail. This document here contains the weather that we're going to need. It contains the weather for our um, origin, which is shallow in this case, our destination, which is Edinburgh, and then our alternates, which in this case are Glasgow, Presswick, Newcastle and Leeds. Okay. It also includes a little bit of en route alternates that might be interesting for us to, um, to keep track of. So, not, without going into too much uh, details about the weather here, I can just show you what this, uh, this weather, if I'm going to, to um, 
um, decode this for you because I know that people watching this channel will probably not understand what this, this means. It starts off with what's called a meta, which is the actual weather. Below that, you have FT, which stands for forecast, and that tells us how the weather is going to progress during the day. So in this case, in Shalowa, where we're going from, the surface wind is blowing from 240 degrees at 9 knots. It's varying between 210 degrees to 270 degrees. The um, uh, visibility is more than 10 kilometers. Clouds are scattered at 4,200 feet. Temperature is 21. The dew point, which is where clouds start forming, is 11. So there's a good split between the two, which means that it's very unlikely that it's going to be foggy. The QNH is 1018. That's the actual pressure. This pressure is important because that uh, is how we determine how high we are over, um, over our uh, destination and our uh, origin. We put that into our altimeters and with that we can judge how high we are. So it's very important to keep track of. No SIG stands for no significant weather. Okay, so it's a good weather day. Now, the forecast is saying that this forecast was done today, the 24th, at 11.16. Okay. It is for the tw uh, 24th at 12 o'clock to the 25th at 18 o'clock. That's how long this forecast is. During that time, the surface wind is going to be 260 degrees at 6 knots. It's more than 10 kilometers, scattered 4,500 feet. There is a probability of 40% that from the 25th at 2 o'clock Zulu to 6 o'clock Zulu, the visibility is going to drop to 4,000 meters in broom, which is mist. Okay. So this is just telling us that the weather is going to be good during the time that we're going to be flying, but it might be misty tomorrow morning. Okay, And this is how we're looking at both our, alt, our um, origin, obviously, since we're coming back here, uh, our destination, and also our alternates. Now, the destination and alternates will have slightly different weather minimums. I'm not going to go into the, to the exact uh, details of that, but the alternate needs to have slightly better weather. And how good weather we need depends on what kind of approach rates we're going to be using. If we have a non-precision approach, which is a slightly less exact way of landing the aircraft or getting the aircraft in towards the runway, well then we need better weather. If we have an instrument landing system, an ILS, we need slightly, well we can do it with slightly worse weather. All right? And we can take it if they have a Cat 3 runway, which not all um, um, airports have, then we can go even lower. And if you want to know how to fly a Cat3 approach, by the way, you can get the Mentor Aviation app. There is a description on how to fly a Cat3 approach in there, which I think you might like. Anyway, so that's the weather. Okay, but on top of the weather, we also need to know if everything is working like it should on the airport. So what we look at then, after we've determined that the weather is okay, is we go on to the next page, which incl includes the NOTAMs. Okay, that stands for Notice to Airmen. And this basically is information about all the airports that we are interested in. What is going on on there? Are they doing any works on the runway, for example? Is all the approach aids working? Uh, are there something that we should know about when it comes to obstacles? Maybe there are cranes working close to the airport. Maybe there are um, lights that are not working on the taxiways. Everything uh, uh, regarding how the airports are actually working is described in the NOTAMs. And if there's no NOTAMs, it means that everything is working like it should. Okay. So that's the NOTAMs. We go through them both for our destination and our alternates and our origin. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of information in here. You know, So this takes a little while to get through. But as you get more and more used to doing this, you'll get quicker and quicker at going through the NOTAMs as well. Right. Once we've determined that everything was okay during the NOTAMs and there's nothing we need to worry about in here, well then, we go to our company NOTAMs. Now, this is different from different companies. So, company NOTAMs is basically an information source that the company gives to its pilots uh, depending on things that are company related. For example, if, um, company frequencies to call to give fuel figures, uh, if there's any specific information that the company wants to give out, or like in our case, when we're using a, um, an iPad and we have documentation on the aircraft on board that needs to be in date, it gives us the validation date in here. 
so that we can make sure that all of the paperwork we're using, all of the plates we're using and everything is up to date, which is extremely important and it's a legal issue that we check it. So that's the company note thumbs. Now, once we checked all through this, we checked the significant weather charts, the wind charts, the weather, the note thumbs, the company note thumbs. We have a quite good picture of how the day is looking. Now, we need to take that information and then apply it to our flight plans. So in this case, we're doing two sectors. So we have a flight going from Chalua to uh, Edinburgh and then from Edinburgh back to Chalua. Now, a flight plan includes two parts. It's one part that is the ATC file flight plan. That is the flight plan that the company has sent into our traffic control to get our route approved prior to flying. Okay, that is one part. Now, the second part is what we're looking at here, which is the information about how much fuel is required, what the route looks like, and all kinds of operational information. And this is what we're using to determine how much fuel we are going to be carried and what we're going to be um, putting into our FMC. Now, I did a video uh, about half a year ago on how to set up the FMC. So check that out if you're interested in how we actually take this information and put it into the FMC. Okay, but basically we look through this flight plan. We make sure that the weights look okay, depending on how many passengers we have. So we make sure that we have the correct alternates and that the alternates have enough good weather. And if they don't, then we need to call our uh, handling agent and we need to get a new flight plan issued with better alternates. It includes information about our waypoints, when we are going to reach our top of climb, what the wind will be there, what kind of uh, ISA deviation, that's basically the, the difference from standard temperature that we will have. All of this information is here if we need it, all the way to our destination, including winds at different altitudes and descent winds that we enter into the FMC in order to calculate a good descent path for the FMC. Right, so once we've done this, we've checked this through, then me and Luca, <laughs> is going to uh, is going to decide on what fuel figure we're going to use. All right. If everything looks good, the weather is good, then the legal minimum which we have here, which include our flight to our destination plus a missed approach plus our flight to our the alternate plus another thirty minutes, is more than enough. Well, actually, it is exactly enough, but that is what we will take. Round it up to the closest hundred kilos or so. But if there is anything that makes us doubt that we'll be able to shoot an approach immediately for example, fog or thunderstorms forecasted, well then we will add on as much fuel as we think is uh, appropriate. We will normally do that in minutes. So if we think that we need 15 minutes of holding for a thunderstorm to pass, for example, well, then we'll add on about 600 kilos, which is half our, um, of our final uh, alternate fuel. So that's what we'll do. When we're happy with the fuel, we both decided on, Luca will go and call that into our operations agent and uh, they are going to start fueling up the aircraft for departure. Then we will both go and talk to the cabin crew. We will present ourselves. I will be giving them an overview of the day, what kind of weather we're looking at, if there's any turbulence to be expected, if there's anything different during the day. Uh, maybe we have some slot times, some you know delays to the flight, or maybe there is something with the aircraft that they need to know about. So basically just giving them the overview. They can ask us questions. And then we'll be talking about some specific security issues as well that I'm not allowed to talk about here on the podcast. Once that's done, then everyone in the, in the crew is, is informed and we will make our way out towards the airport or out towards the aircraft. Guys, I hope you like that one. I know it's a little bit of an overview. Like I said before, if you have more questions about specific parts of the paperwork, then I'll be happy to do a podcast about that. But for now, I'm hoping you all have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.